The Friendship Game is a 2022 sci-fi thriller starring Peyton List. Ever heard of it? No? Lucky you. If you have seen it, you probably checked out around the 20 minute mark, and I wish I would have done the same. It may not be the worst movie out there, but it's certainly not great. It tries way too hard to be something it's not. It wants to have some deep, profound meaning, but in reality, it's surface level high school drama and leaves you with more questions than answers. Maybe I'm not the target audience, but that doesn't give it a pass to be a bad movie. It's sloppy and poorly written, there's a neat premise behind it, however, the execution fell flat, and if you're not paying attention, good luck figuring out what's going on, because the best way to describe the plot is a lot's going on, but nothing happens, and when something does happen, it doesn't make sense. Maybe I'm just dumb, which is fair, but today I wanted to go over the movie and the issues I have with it. If you end up enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe, and let's get into the friendship game. Before we get into it, I want to introduce our main characters, Z, Cotton, Robbie, and Courtney. They're your or regular angsty teens written by people who don't know anything about teens, which makes for some awkward dialogue and shallow characters. Everyone in the group is currently going through the motions knowing that this is their last summer together before they go off to college, which is pretty hard to believe because they look like fucking seniors in college at the least. Like, you're gonna try and convince me this chick is 17? No. Can we please stop casting middle-aged men and women to play teenagers in movies? So it begins with Cotton and Z at a garage sale and they walk up to this cryptic lady who's about one pitch away from sounding like Gollum speaking in riddles and shit. She tries to sell them this game that will supposedly test their friendship and if their friendship doesn't survive, then neither will they. Instead of being like, this lady's fucking weird, let's get out of here, they end up buying it because Cotton wants to see if this will prove they will stay friends when they separate for school. I wish we had more lore on the game because we never find out how it works or why it does what it does. Is it a demon, a god, a malevolent spirit? Who knows? The movie likes making you ask questions but never comes back to explain anything, like why is this character important? Or why does this happen? Why are they acting this way? What we do know about the game is that you put your hand on it and tell it your deepest desire, but you have to be honest, and the only way they can win the game is by staying friends after it tests you. While they're playing, we are introduced to this little creep named Kyle who's been hacking into Cotton's webcam and recording her every move. He's even watching while all of them play the game together. It's a weird plot device that doesn't matter and is only in the movie for something later. This is also where I want to mention that from here on out, the movie breaks into three timelines. One is in the room where they play the game, the other is going to be at a party, and the third is what happens after the party. We're going to see the events played out from each friend's perspective, and it sounds interesting in theory, but they do a terrible job of executing it. Cotton goes first, and she desires to be able to break out of the reality of life. She doesn't want the group to stray away from each other, worried that if they get caught up in college, work, or end up having kids, they'll miss out on life and be miserable. We never learn much of anything about the characters besides basic level stuff. Z's dramatic and pops pills and her dad left town due to his addiction. Cotton is angsty and wants to run away because she's afraid of being stagnant. Robbie's a douche with a bad haircut and Courtney, um, she's just kind of there to look pretty. Like, without her, this movie would be no different. And that's nothing against, like, her character or her as a person. It's just they really don't have a purpose for her besides being a body. Later that night, I'm guessing, they're all at this party in some abandoned building and we're shown Cotton, who's walking around looking for her friend group. She goes outside and this is where she runs into Courtney and asks her if she's seen Robbie and Z. Obviously, in distress, she's been crying and looks upset, but she doesn't explain why she's upset or what's going on, and it bothers me because we never see what happened leading up to this moment. Why is she upset? Why does she think something's wrong? The movie revolves around her and yet we never get her full perspective. Instead of helping or talking to her friend, Courtney just offers her a Percocet and tells her to go get drunk. Cotton slaps the pills out of her hand and says, I I thought we were friends, walking back inside to look for Robbie and Z by herself. She ends up taking a peek inside of a random room and finds them doing the nasty. She runs out to her car, having a meltdown, ripping up a picture of all of them together. When all of a sudden, an evil doppelganger comes out of the back seat, Lex lugering her into the abyss, which is something else the movie does a shitty job of explaining. Where did she go? Does she get pulled into the game or killed? Why is she glitching and all distorted? We never see her side, and it makes you feel like you missed a scene somewhere, but it's just the movie being inconsistent. We then switch scenes to that creepy hacker kid riding on his bike around town and we learn from the plethora of flyers hanging up that Cotton is missing in real life. And when I say plethora, I mean it. It's a tad excessive, don't you think? And here's another thing that bothers me. It's pouring rain outside, everything is wet and soggy, and we see a flyer on the ground that's perfectly intact. No water stains, no mud, not even a speck of dirt. Couldn't they have at least stomped on it a few times? It's not a huge deal, but it just kind of bothers me. Kyle arrives home and decides 
to make this weird um, sandwich, I think, and eats it like an animal. When his mom walks into the room and says she's worried because he's been skipping out on day camp and she's afraid he's gonna get into trouble again. None of this matters. Nothing about this kid matters. They only put him in the movie to confuse the viewers because he has no purpose besides the fact that he's been watching Cotton. He goes into his room and decides to play a video he recorded of Cotton when she was crying. She glitches out and looks directly at the camera and I think it's supposed to be scary, but it was funnier more than anything. Another issue is that the pacing and cuts are really weird and nothing is cohesive. We learn everybody's desire too late in the movie when it would have been helpful to know all of them in the beginning so that when characters are being manipulated by the alternate realities the game creates, we wouldn't be lost the whole time and we'd understand what's happening. Instead, we get led on what feels like a giant goose chase for over half the film and even by the end of it, we still don't know what was real or just the game toying with them. Z ended up telling the game that she didn't want to give a shit about any of her friends when they end up leaving for college. As for the night of the party, we see her and the other friends talking like they've never had a single conversation in their life. It's cringe-inducing, they're also just chugging hard liquor and mixing alcohol like one chick downed a bottle of vodka and then proceeded to swig out of a bottle of bourbon, which one, ew, and two, disgusting. If they wanted to make this believable, they should have been drinking UV blue and like Keystone. So Z and Robbie decide to go to the roof to pop a pill and wash it down with bourbon. More cringy dialogue ensues as they discuss the concept of infinite versions of themselves in the vast of space. You know, typical deep teenager stuff. They end up kissing and he says maybe this is the one reality where they stay friends. They then go to the room to, you know, which is what Cotton saw from the doorway. The condom breaks and Z walks off to the bathroom only to see Cotton's room in the reflection of the mirror and black out. Flash forward to the current time, we're in Z's room and she's looking at a picture of all of them together when she notices Cotton's face glitching out. And we hear a voice say, have your friendship survived? Which is quickly interrupted by her mom calling her downstairs to speak with a detective about Cotton's disappearance. You think this is gonna come up later because it looks like Z is maybe a suspect in the case and as a viewer you think oh did Z do something to her? But this is never brought up again and it doesn't matter. Like why even add this? The movie could have been a lot shorter and easier to follow if they weren't throwing in random plot points that have no significance. Also Z is very combative with the police officer which I don't understand. Don't you want to be as helpful as possible? It is your best friend that's missing after all. And the more combative combative and standoffish you are, the more suspicious it's going to look in regards to a missing persons case. I think the movie was trying to make it seem like Z doesn't care that Cotton's missing at all, which would go with her desire to not care about when the friends separate for college. But instead, they make Z just look suspicious and like she knows more than what she's saying. We cut to Z and Courtney hanging up more flyers because I guess there aren't enough. They get into an argument because Courtney thinks the game may have something to do with Cotton's disappearance, but Z calls her crazy. We learn that Courtney's desire was how she she wanted to get accepted into this college that she had no chance of joining because she didn't do well her last year in high school. However, she finds an acceptance letter delivered to her house. Z doesn't seem to care and heads to work. While there, she has a hallucination in the bathroom of a stab wound to her stomach. When she goes to leave, Robbie shows up and says that they need to talk about what's going on, but Z doesn't want to, telling him they're no longer friends and drives home, leaving him behind. She gets a text from Kyle's mom asking if she'll babysit and she agrees. This is when we get to see Robbie's play of events. He desired to be good at sex, which you'd have to waterboard that type of info out of me. Like there is no way I'm telling even my closest friend. That's something you'll just have to take to the grave. We see that after he leaves Z's work and the argument, he went back to where the party was and he's smoking on top of the roof. The line where he says maybe this is the universe we stay friends forever to Z is on repeat. He then follows a shadow figure into to one of the hallways because um I guess it's a horror movie and people do stupid things. He sees Cotton and she asks if all their friendships have survived. We see her bleeding out of her stomach and he runs off to Cotton's house to get the game. And we watch this all through the hacker's camera, which starts to glitch out and we see Cotton Freddy Fazbear jump at the screen, scaring Kyle as she asks him if he wants to play a game with her. And we watch him start glitching out. I don't even know, dude. I really don't know. Z arrives at Kyle's house to babysit and later on, Courtney and Robbie show up with the game, with hopes that if they try playing again they can figure out what's going on. This time they all tell the game that their desire is to know what happened to Cotton. The orb starts vibrating and it bites Z, making her bleed. Z goes to wash the blood off while Courtney and Robbie are together, they talk about how it doesn't even seem like Z cares about their friendship, which again is in line with her desire. Just as Courtney is about to leave, they all get a message on their phone showing them someone was watching them through Cotton's webcam from the day they played the game. This is when we finally get to find out what Kyle is 
is here for. Z concludes that it must be him who sent it because he's gotten into trouble for this stuff before. They devise a plan to try and distract him or get him to come downstairs, so one of them will be able to go upstairs and look at the computer to see if he knows something about her disappearance. Z ends up getting him to come downstairs to watch a horror movie with her while Robbie goes up to look at his computer. Why didn't they just ask him if they knew something was going on? If it was him that sent the video, they could have just called him out on it. Robbie ends up clicking on a video where it's Cotton having <laughs> with someone. A Kyle doppelganger pops out and says she was one of his favorites too. Care to elaborate on that one, Kyle? While downstairs, Z looks over at the table and sees the game vibrating again. She asks Kyle if he sees it too, but he's too busy glitching out. I guess the boys upstairs are bonding because Kyle says how he loves how private Cotton was and Robbie says she's always been that way. It's towards the end of the video and we see Cotton and Rob both get out of the bed. So this is when we learn that Robbie took Cotton to Pound Town and just forgot about it, saying that he doesn't remember doing that. We never find out if this is what he did or if it was just something the game did to fuck with his head. He runs downstairs and tells Z that Cotton left town because it was her who walked in on them having sex. She asks if he was sleeping with her too, but instead of answering, he tells her that sometimes when he does things, it doesn't feel like him. She says, Robbie, you're scaring me, and he flips out saying, he's not Robbie anymore, and to call him Rob. They hear a scream from the bathroom and run to see Courtney crying because she just saw Cotton in the mirror. Z yells at Robbie, don't fucking call me Rob, I mean Rob, to leave the bathroom, and Courtney tells Z that on the night of the party, it felt like Z and Rob were ignoring her, and then she remembers how Rob was saying all that junk about the universe, and how there could be multiple, and how lucky they are to have each other, and how it felt like him, but not completely. I'm sorry, but the guy with the Tom Shelby 2.0 is not sleeping with three women at the same time. We never see him having sex with Courtney, so is this just his desire to be good at sex played out by sleeping with all of his friends? I mean, it would be something to test their friendship and to cause it to crumble. It's never really elaborated on. We never understand what it is going on. We just have to assume that this is the game messing with them, but we never know for sure. No, I don't need to be walked through a movie, but a little bit of exposition would be nice. Just so we could piece things together and make a cohesive story because even by the end of the movie, nothing is explained and it drives me nuts. It's like they realized the movie wasn't making sense, so they're like, how about we just confuse the fuck out of people and make anyone that doesn't understand feel like an idiot. It's like a bad acid trip. Robbie steps outside after spotting a Kyle lookalike in the yard, and he suddenly discovers Cotton's lifeless body in a creek with her stomach slashed. And when he looks down, it's him holding the knife. Frantically, he rushes to the door but finds himself locked out. Back inside, the girls tell each other that they love each other, and Z goes in search of Robbie while Courtney helps herself to a drink of alcohol. Who takes liquor from someone else's house, especially when you're supposed to be babysitting there? So this is where the movie shows us everyone's separate version of what happened to Cotton. We're first shown Z's, she and Cotton ran into each other after the party, and Cotton tells Z that she's leaving town and not taking Z with her, because she caught Robbie and Z getting down. She tells Z that no one even likes her, and she's the reason her dad left, which pisses Z off, causing her to punch her so hard, Cotton falls back and hits her head on the car handle, killing her. This would make sense why she was so weird during the police investigation, but it's never alluded to the idea Z killed Cotton until now, and even if this did happen, where did Cotton's body go? This should not be a missing persons case, but a full-on murder investigation. Back to the present time, the game starts speaking through Kyle, saying that they failed the test. Robbie ends up being able to get back inside through Kyle's window and sees the computer working on its own. He clicks on a video that says Cotton's murder, and we see him stabbing Cotton in the pond he was just at. Excuse me? Cotton has been missing for some time now, so this wouldn't have just happened, which means Cotton's body has just been lying out in some random kid's yard for how long? Why has no one noticed her body? Did her body just disappear? And why did Robbie kill her? This is never explained. Now Robbie is glitching like Kyle and Cotton is transported out to the pond. Is this Robbie or is it an evil doppelganger? Now Courtney looks at her phone where a video of Cotton is playing, talking about how it's Courtney's fault she died. Because in her timeline, Cotton OD'd on the pills that Courtney tried handing her during the party. But we never see this like how we saw Z or Robbie kill Cotton. And if you go back, we know that Cotton asks her for the pills, but Cotton never takes them from her. She just walks away after slapping them out of her hand. So again, if she committed the S word, 
Why in the current time has no one found her body? Courtney hears knocking on the patio door and goes to let Robbie in and he stabs her. Z runs into the kitchen and sees everything that's happening and runs away. And instead of running outside, she fucking runs up the stairs. Like what? Robbie ends up being able to get on top of her when she says, no, Robbie, we're best friends. She sees Cotton behind him and this is her turn to get transported into the nether where she and Cotton are talking about how they both let each other down and Z apologizes for what she did. And I guess it works because we're then teleported back in time to the yard sale in the beginning. This time around though, they don't end up buying the game, saying they don't need to test their friendship. They walk off to the car where the rest of the friends are waiting and Cotton asks Z what her deepest desire is. I get to be with my best friends. What? This movie pisses me off so much. We go through all this shit and none of it matters. Nothing is explained and we are left wondering what the fuck fever dream was. I have so many questions that need answers. Like, is Robbie banging all his friends? Did Z know that Cotton was dead and that's why she was talking all weird to the cop? What is the purpose of this game? What does it do? Why does it do it? And is Kyle ever going to be caught now? Or is he just gonna continue to creep on Cotton? Do I hate the movie? I don't know. I'm still debating. I just feel like I needed to talk about it because I'm not the only person who feels this way either. It's like in every review I read, people were searching for answers and trying to make it make sense, but were left just as confused as I was. The movie felt like it could have been a Goosebumps episode, and if I'm being honest with you, I like the idea of the movie itself. It just sucks that the people in charge didn't do a good job of executing it. Anyway, thank you for listening to me rant about this. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe if you made it this far, and I hope you have an amazing day. Goodbye.